How are we all doing, folks? It has been a while. Um, yeah, busy. Very, very busy. But it's a good thing, because I'm busy, means I'm selling, and everything's going honky-dory, which it is. Um, got some interesting new things coming up. I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Um, it's more of just a catch-up. Um, I've not been watching that many videos. I've had so much work to do. Um, and you can't catch up. You view your subscriptions on YouTube, and if you stupidly subscribe to as many people as I do, you're lucky to get two days worth of videos. So you just have to keep going down the list and going, ah, I used to like watching your videos, I like watching your videos, see what you're doing. Um, good to see and hear from some familiar faces again. And uh, I figured it's definitely about time for me to put up a video. I don't think I've done one since my um, the Christmas Yabbo. I mean, the uh, Secret Santa Yabbo. Which was before Christmas. Hmm. Could be two months ago then. Jeez. Time flies. So, um, like I say, in this video, it's more of a catch up. Um, I hope I've not missed much. Um, if any of you want to tell me stuff that I've missed, um, I haven't even been back on Vimo since the whole uh, exodus. Um, I still don't know how that's actually panned out. Is there still lots of people that aren't on here anymore? Or. You know, has everybody moved over to Vimo or has everybody migrated back? I don't know. Somebody keep me up to date, please. Just stick it in the uh, comments thing down the bottom. Um, so, yeah. Um, like I say, uh, so much stuff's gone off. Um, I've just lost track. But anyway, the point of this video. Um, I have noticed a lot of people's top 10 for 2013. So I thought... Um, I sit down and try and remember some of the things I smoked last year. Um, a lot of stuff, to be honest. Um, so, I've put together a list. Um, none of these are really new. A few are new, I guess. And, um, to be honest, a lot of what I smoked last year was mainly my own stuff, which I'm not going to put in my top ten, because it's a little bit too egotistical. Um, or is it? So, number one, uh, GQ Blends Classic English. Or, no, 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 no. So, I'm going to start. These are in no real particular order. Um, I basically just was trying to think of, you know, what I've smoked from the year that's memorable. Um, tobacco's always in my mind. Um, it's kind of what I do. <laughs> so, um, like I say, in no particular order, um, GLP's Gaslight. Oh, God, that was freaking phenomenal stuff. Um, I luckily ended up with a couple of different tins, and that was just, oh, some beautiful flavours in there, it was slightly leathery, but it's just this oh, wonderful tobacco, um, thick, dark, plumes of smoke, creamy, savoury as hell, absolutely phenomenal stuff, um, I think I've got, I've got an unopened tin in the cellar, we shall see how she goes, uh, Northwoods, another tobacco that, I think I've had three or four times different different batches of it, and I absolutely adore the stuff. Um, a friend of mine recently got into pipe smoking. Um, he's mainly smoking aromatics, cherry, vanilla, black cherry, and um, I had what ounce, ounce and a half of Northwoods. And he's got a pretty big church warden, so I uh, you know, loaded him up with a nice, generous sized bowl. Give that a try. You know, int try and introduce you to some non-aromatics, and. Um, he was discreetly trying to empty his uh, pipe out and put cherry vanilla back in it when he thought I wasn't looking. So um, out of my prized Northwoods collection, um, some of it ended up tipped in a plant pot outside. Not everybody's cup of tea, I guess. Hmm. Camera's going, camera's going funny. I hope this isn't going funny on the actual video. Um, and it's just the preview, but we'll we'll see. Um, H H H old dark no H H old dark fired. Um, now this now this tobacco has been available internationally for quite a while. Uh, it was introduced into the UK at the end of last year, and it, it's good that it's there. Um, I mean, I like uh, Peterson's Irish Flake, uh, Flake, uh, Peter Stockham's Dark Irish Slicers. Um, I like Dark Kentucky, Dark Virginia, Dark Burley. I like dark, strong, nutty, earthy, leathery flakes, plugs, twists, ready rubs, anything. Old Dark Fired is absolutely freaking phenomenal stuff. I adore that tobacco. Um, another one that I think I only got first tried that last year. Gower from Hogarth, Balkan Flake. Not listed on tobacco reviews, 
but that is it's on a par with um, Gaslight. But man, that stuff produces plumes of smoke, and it is so thick, it is so creamy, it feels like you're actually eating something in your mouth rather than smoking it. Um, in the room I used to do my videos, it's smaller than this, um, but you light a pipe and within five minutes you struggle to see what you're doing. Windows open, fan on behind you, because that just churns smoke out, but it tastes utterly amazing. Um, people rave about the Samuel Goweth one, um, I prefer the Samuel Gareth Balkan in a plug form rather than in the flake, but out of the two, the G&H one, the Samuel Gareth does not even get close to the Gareth and Hogarth version of the Balkan flake. Uh, next one is the Frogmorton Cellar. Um, now this is a tobacco which I may have a dabble at, do my own take on it, not an exact copy, that's just lazy and cheating, um, but I'm going to be looking into getting some staves in a couple of months time. Um, and I may do something slightly different with rum. Um, so I, I don't know. We will see. But Frogmorton Cellar is just oh, exceptional stuff. Smooth, creamy, got the lovely whiskiness to it, the sweetness to it. It's just a divine tobacco. Um, I think I have a little, I think about a quarter of a tin left. Um, so it's a smoke that I say well, I smoke sparingly. Um, I usually smoke it at Pipe Club. I just love the stuff. Um, I'd like to get hold of more of it eventually. Uh, that is a hint, by the way. Um, next on my list is another Balkan, believe it or not. Uh, this is the Samuel Gareth Balkan plug, which I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the Gareth and Hogarth flake version. Um, this is beautiful. Um, not as wet as the uh, as the, the sliced um, well, that sliced flake version that you get in the tin. Um, and I find it's got more of a that distinct Samuel Gowith full Virginia, that kind of I can I struggle to put my finger on, but that distinct Samuel Gowith Virginia sort of taste. Even if you get their blending base tobaccos, they still have that very distinct kind of flavour to them. Like Gowith and Hogarth, but always with a background Lakeland scent. There's something about the Virginias that Samuel Gowith used that are just phenomenal. They have this beautiful kind of underlying flavour that's not, not not a vegetal sort of taste. I struggle to put my finger on it. It's kind of a not compost heat, but it's got a very natural vegetal sort of taste to it, which you don't, which I've not really found with any other Virginias that any other blenders use. Just Samuel Gower. Um it Kind of brings me on to a little bit of something. I make a new vapor, um, the Asquith Cake, made for Chris Asquith, pipe maker. Um, you don't know who Chris is then get out from under the rock you're under and do a search for Asquith Pipes online because Chris makes some phenomenal stuff he's an amazing pipe maker and um, like I say that's the first tobacco I made for um, for a pipe maker I'm currently working on one for John Daffley, Gio Giovanni whichever name you choose to call him by I'm working on a tobacco for him also um, but the Asquith Cake uses a predominant Virginia base from Samuel Gower, so it has a very distinct Samuel Gower style taste to it. Anyway, I'm dropping off, dropping away from the subject. Um, right, number seven on my list is the Royal Cajun Ebony, um, which again, I believe early on last year, somebody gifted me some of that, and that stuff is freaking awesome. If I remember rightly, it's a Virginia Perique Kentucky blend. Was it just Virginia and Kentucky? It kind of goes through a... Um, Perique fermentation, it's stoved, and that is exceptionally smooth and so flavoursome. Um, again, another wonderful tobacco. Um, there's something about it reminds me of Rat Rays. I don't know why. There's something about the um, the Royal Cajun Ebony that it's. If I wasn't told what it was, I'd assume it's a Rat Rays tobacco. I think Charles Rat Rays tobaccos have that slightly unique, distinct kind of character to them. This has got that in it as well. Um, next on the list is a tobacco that's kind of divided opinion, really. Um, Dunhill's Elizabethan mixture. I was lucky enough to get hold of the uh, the, the first tin in the UK, the, uh, the sample tin, um, and I thought it was gorgeous. Um, it's a vapour. Um, I wasn't expecting, and you shouldn't expect from it, anything more than a traditional, nice, smooth, with a slight bit of spice, just a very good, honest um, Virginia and Perique mixture. Um, it was very nice stuff. Uh, number nine is an old classic that 
I like, never get bored of, um, which is Revolt Pug, currently made by Gareth Hogarth, originally by Manchester Tobacco Company, I think it was. That is a wonderful Lakeland plug. Um, nowhere near as dense as Three Ps, uh, nowhere near as dense as um, Warrior Plug, nowhere near as dense as uh, Mick McQuaid Plug. Um, but Revolt Plug, wonderful, sweet, Lakeland style flavours with a nice dark, fire killed tobacco. Lovely and rich, lots of flavour. Um, and like I say, it's an extremely good tobacco. Uh, and then last one, I can't not include it. Um, if I had the choice out of two, Stonehaven or Rich Dark Flake, um, I'd probably choose Stonehaven just because it's harder to get. Um, I'm, I'm used to having Rich Dark Flake coming out of my ear rolls. Um, I carry carry it by the kilos. Uh, it's such a popular tobacco, but it, there's a reason it's such a popular tobacco. It is phenomenal stuff. Um, that's my list of ten. I strongly recommend that if you haven't tried any of those, definitely give them a try because they're all outstanding top-notch solid tobaccos um, nothing really aromatic in there frog morton cellar i guess has got some flavoring to it even though it's just an alcohol based um, all the rest are pretty much just straight through straight tobaccos well obviously apart from the few that are lake ones which i don't really class as an aromatic anyway i'm going completely off point again um, try not to ramble <laughs> yeah here we go right so to end the video, um, this year's British Pipe Smoking Championships, we're going for something a little bit different. Um, we're turning it into a pipe show. Um, so far we have a number of pipe makers confirmed that are going to be there, Northern Briars, Chris Aswith, JSEC Pipes from the States, um, and hopefully we're going to have some more of the bigger commercial guys there. Um, I'm hoping to be there with uh, Philip Rivara Pipes, I'm hoping to be there with what I've got of Geo Pipes, um, I'm waiting on a massive order of um, Missouri Mersham, uh, pretty much all the shapes. Um, I'm going to be one of the biggest Missouri Mersham uh, retailers in Europe, I hope. Um, so I'm hoping to exhibit those there. Um, and so this is basically a, a, a request. If there's any pipe makers on here who would like to have their pipes exhibited at the British Pipe Smoking Championships, please contact me. Um, what I'm prepared to do um, is I'm prepared to share my table with other people's stock. Um, people have to send me the pipes, obviously. Um, if they give me a price of what they want for them, I can try and sell them on the day. Uh, whatever's sold, I will pay for as soon as I get back home and have unpacked and relaxed because it's a stressful day. Um, and anything else will be stuck back in the post. Um, priority track mail straight back to them. It's basically we just want to showcase the world world of pipe makers to smokers in the UK. We have no shows like this. We really want to do push for it. Um, those of you who want to enter the slow smoking competition, which is still going to be the main event of the day, uh, entry is £45, that pays for your pipe, your tobacco, and pays for running the event. It costs a lot of money, and a lot of it is done voluntarily, and it often comes out of the people who run the Federation of British Pipe Club's own pockets. Um, anyone in the trade that's interested, £30 for a table. Um, it can be anything. You can be there selling estate pipes, junk you've picked up off eBay you want to sell. A few people want to share a table, I know that they would want to. Um, so yeah, oh, there will also be Q and A sessions on the day as well. Um, we'll have one with pipe makers. Um, we're trying to get Alan from Reborn Briar to do a couple of little seminars. Um, I'm potentially going to be doing a blending session on the day um, and a session on snuff as well. So any of you in the UK, please come along. It's a wonderful day out. Join together with all pipe smokers. We're all together. So it's Sunday the 13th of July at Newark Showground, which is in North Nottinghamshire. Um, you're slap bang in the middle of the UK. Um, we, couldn't, we thought it was the fairest for everybody, um, even people from London. You know, you've only got to go up the M1. If you're up in Scotland, you just got to come down the M1. You know, we're slap bang in the middle, good transport links, there's, bus, there's um, trains and there's good roadways to get there. Um, like I say, Sunday the 13th of July. So I'm hoping to be back very soon with another video. Um, oh, I've oh, I've passed 2,000 subscribers. Thanks to all of you for subscribing. Um, I am doing a contest. Um, you probably can't quite see it, but just up, whoops, just up there. Um, there's a very expensive black leather tobacco pouch, and um, somewhere over, 
somewhere over that way is um, a very old vintage pipe that has never been smoked. It is going to be a rather spectacular prize fund. I've just got to think of something interesting to do for the competition. Or it might just be a lucky dip. We shall see. But anyway, um, I've literally got 45 seconds left before the uh, memory card is full. Um, so yeah, that's a catch up. Um, like I say, everything's going honky dory with GQ Tobaccos. Those of you who have not been and had a look at my website yet, you'll find all the information in the bucket down below. And um, it's good to good to speak to you all again. Um, I will try and keep up to date with videos. Not always easy. If anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'm on Facebook pretty much 24/7. I am the world local Facebook tobacconist. That's a stealth proclaimed title i made that up but anyway whatever so as i was saying thank you ever so much for watching folks shall see you all soon so take care goodbye